Hey, what's up everyone? This is Eli from Checkit.com here with the Cinema 4D tutorial on Waba Fett Wednesday, whatever it is Wednesday. I don't know what we decided to call it. I did film this yesterday, but I was extremely sick and my girlfriend came over and, you know, nursed me back to health and everything like that. I recorded it and I looked at it today and it was horrible, so I'm refilming it. And this is actually Ch -ch Check It's 300th video. Yay, we're so awesome. But uh, anyway, the highly requested tutorial that I'm going to be doing today is of my intro. And the original animation was made by Shravit Sood. And I know exactly how he made it, so I'll be able to tell you guys how he did all this. But you guys need to keep in mind that uh, I actually added a lot to this intro right here. So there was, you know, the animation right here, but there's also this right here. I'm going to turn the sound off. There's also the camera zoom, the blur, the realism, and then the, the flare that I added in. So this is going to be a two-part tutorial. Uh, right now we're going to be focusing on the actual animation that Shravit made today. With that, I guess we can get to the tutorial. I will be including the project file, so for all my hard work, please give the video a like. I mean, I'm refilming this entire thing for you guys. Please give the video a like, and also, don't forget to leave a comment, because I leave all my favorite comments at the end of the video. And with that, let's get started with the 300th tutorial. Let's do it. <laughs> Fair warning, guys. This entire thing was basically made using Grayscale Gorilla products. So, I'm going to try to show you guys exactly how we made it, but you guys are going to have to go out and get the Grayscale Gorilla products. I'll leave links to them in the description, but yeah, just... Fair warning. Alright, so I'm going to go to Grayscale Gorilla Lighting, and I'm going to go up to the studios, and we're just going to pick one. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Let's just do this Window Light Studio, go back to the objects. Alright, let's delete the Replace Me, and then let's actually zoom in just a little bit. Use the 3 and the 1 just to kind of get a better angle of these. So let's start by creating the scene. Alright, so this left camera, if you couldn't tell, it, it has kind of an orangish yellow light over here. So let's start with that one. So it's this rim softbox. So what we have to do is we have to go to the softbox move and hit C to make it editable. Then we'll double click on this. We'll go into the luminance tab and we'll double click on this texture right here. All right, so we want it to stay white, of course, but then when it gets to the gray, let's change it to a more yellow orange, like a bright, there we go. That looks like it. All right, now let's move on this one right here, this right softbox. First thing we need to do is actually move it, so let's go to the softbox move, and then we'll go up to the move tool right here, and we'll just move it up slightly, because if you'd notice right here, it's not that well lit over in this area, which gives it a cool look, and there's also kind of a sharp shadow down here, and we just want more of a highly contrasted shadow. All right, and then uh, we'll actually go into this, and we'll hit C to make it editable, of course double click on this go down to the texture right here and make it from gray we'll actually make it kind of a bluish darker uh, like a right about there probably okay cool and now we'll go to this front spotlight we'll click on it hit C and we'll drop this down hit C again click on the texture double click all right double click right here and now we'll make this one yellow as well, like a kind of worn out yellow, okay? Now we can actually get into creating the animation. So let's click on the camera, and let's click on this little black box over here. And now we get to our center attention area. This is what we want to mess with. So let's go up to MoGraph, go down to MoText, and let's just mess with this. Let's click and make it center, and let's just make it whatever our company name is. So obviously, check it and then we'll go and change the font now I don't know what font he used exactly and he's always you know going through the comments on commenting so uh, you guys can ask him if you want but I'm just gonna use typograph pro because it's a pretty awesome font pretty easy to see I'm gonna just size it up a little bit and also I'm gonna extrude the depth a lot because you could tell in this they're pretty thick and <laughs> that's what she said hey we like we like them thick right ladies <laughs> Yeah, that joke always has to make its uh, presence. Anyway, I'm going to hit one and move over and just, you know, be able to see this a little more. I actually want to go a little bit above, maybe look down. Cool. I'm just getting a, the correct angle that I want. That looks awesome to me. Now what we want to do is we want to create the texture, the color of this font. So let's double click down here, double click on the 
material too that we just made. And let's start with the color. So let's make it the same color that Shrevit or Shrevit made, which is kind of a worn out tealish color. You see? Uh, it's not exact, but I mean, I'm not going to spend an hour on that. <laughs> Alright, now let's go to the reflection. And uh, let's just add a Fresnel, go to the texture right here, just add a Fresnel. This is very basic Cinema 40 stuff, you guys have probably messed with this a lot. Alright, now let's add a specular map of our own. So, you'll see that we just have this little bump right here. What we want to do is we want to decrease the width, increase the fallout just a little bit, or fall off, sorry, I play that game too much. Increase the height all the way, and then make the inner width pretty thick, alright? Then I'll just make it way more shiny and uh, I, I just think it looks a lot better so I'm gonna drag and drop that onto Mo text and I also want to bring out the edges of this Mo text so I'm actually gonna click on it and I'm gonna drop down these fillet or fillet caps it's actually fillet guys I'm, I'm not stupid but I like calling it fillet because it's different and I think it's funny it should actually be looking pretty awesome so let's actually pre-render this just by hitting this button right here and look how cool that looks. I mean, it's not exact, but it's actually pretty close, guys. So now we can make the secondary thing. And uh, he used the Ch -ch Check It logo, but I want to actually make a separate tutorial about how to import logos and stuff like that into Cinema 4D. So I'm actually just going to use a shape. You guys can import your logo later once I make that tutorial, or if you already know how, then you guys can do that. But I'm just going to make a platonic shape real quick. I'm going to bring it up, increase the radius and make it from Ecosa to Bucky. I'm gonna increase the segments to like 20. And this is actually pretty important because we want to increase the segments so then Transform has more things to break apart. All right, and we're gonna increase the radius some more. Awesome, that should be fine right about there. I mean, it doesn't need to be perfect. We'll just go to the Z and just bring it a little closer. Cool. So it's more center, that's all I did there. Alright guys, so now we're just going to click and hit control and just click and drag this material onto the platonic plate. And now we're going to go up to plugins, transform. And if you guys want this clipped on here, which I usually do but I took it off because I want to show you guys this. Right click, go down to customize palettes, uh, name filter, let's just type in trans because it doesn't need to go that far. There it is right there, we'll just click and drag it and it clips on right there, look at that. Now we can just hit transform twice and we need two of them because we have two things that are going to be changing so uh, let's just rename these so it's easier to do let's click on the first transform hit enter it's like after effects and now we're gonna type in text the second one we'll click on enter and let's just call it the logo awesome let's go into the logo and you'll see this ref object right here that's the reference object we want to click and drag the platonic layer into the reference object and then click on text and click and drag the mo text into that as well. Now we have both of these. Just make sure that the text has the mo text in it and the logo has the platonic layer in it. Now let's hit refresh on the logo and refresh in this layer too. And right away if you hit play, you'll notice that we already have the animation starting. But you'll also notice that there's a little issue going on here. They're both animating frontwards. We want the logo to happen in reverse because we want it to make it look like it's creating itself or being transformed into the object. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click on logo. We're going to go down to transition. Instead of out, we want it in. And now you'll notice that as the check it layer goes out, the platonic layer is being created. It's pretty cool, huh? Uh, I guess the only thing left to do is mess with these settings until we get something that we like. So I'm just going to walk through some of the settings in here. So let's start with um, just the text layer. Let's go over here. All right, so it's actually pretty basic. So we're going to go down and let's just increase the movement a little bit. That just increases the amount of movement that happens on the screen as it's animating. And then uh, rotation, it's pretty self-explanatory. We just want to increase that a little bit. The end scale. Uh, we're just going to leave that at zero because we want it to go away completely. The fall off we can leave up and the randomness we can leave up as well. And if you want a different animation you could change the random seed and it'll give you a different animation with every value that you change there. Alright guys, so now let's go into the logo. And with this, 
Uh, since we created a platonic plate with a lot of segments, you'll see that we're getting kind of a weird look here. And instead of effect right here, you guys could change it to anything. And I recommend going through all of these and seeing which one you like the most. There is a ton of great effects here. What I'm going to stick with right now, just because, you know, I want it to look kind of cool, is I'm going to choose Splinter. See how it kind of changes and turns into something kind of cool? Uh, well, let's actually also change the orientation. This is how the animation happens. Right now it's going on negative X, so it's happening from left to right, as you could obviously see. So let's actually change it from, hmm, about negative Z. Now let's preview this and just make sure that we like how negative Z looks. So I'm just going to hit that button up there. Alright, that looks pretty awesome, but a little tip guys, because I'm all about giving the little tips. If you want to change how big the chunks are, you can put this left, but you need to keep in mind that increases the render time by a lot. So, I'm just going to leave it at default, because I really don't want it to take that long when I render this. And also, if you don't like that kind of Lego effect going on here, in order to fix that, you need to go to the original platonic plate and you need to turn up the segments here. Or, if you want to change it on the font, you need to change in the object settings, the subdivision right here. Because that'll give it a lot more segments to break the text at. So, I guess with that guys, we're pretty much done. It looks pretty awesome. And the thing you need to keep in mind is, you can always mess with the animations here until you get something you like. But, I'm just trying to get something that looks kind of like the original intro. So when we pick up on Friday, we're not going to be using Cinema 4D. We're going to be adding color correction, blur, and flares to really improve upon regular Cinema 4D intros. So with that, guys, I really hope you guys learned something. This tutorial was basically to show you or give you the tools to be able to create an intro like the one that Shravit made for to just check it. So it's pretty awesome. So guys, with that, I'm going to render this out, and I will see you guys on Friday. Don't forget to leave a comment because I leave all my favorite comments at the end of the video. And please give the video a like for all my hard work. I mean, I filmed this twice for you guys. I love you. <laughs> and with that, I'll see you guys on Friday. Peace out.